Ted Dog, welcome you to Ted Russ Ministries for October 8th, 2023. So glad you're listening today. We begin this program in the powerful name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to your Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You protect us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil that in all of our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your, into your hands we commend our body and soul and all that is ours, that your holy angels take charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Friend, you may not have this problem, but some of us leave important tasks of life undone because we get preoccupied with trivia. Life's big picture can escape us. The result is what we might call the terrible triumph of trivialities. One person has a great job, but no family life. Another person is a great golfer, but his spouse recently left him and he doesn't have a very good job. One person loves to watch your favorite TV shows, but has no time for church worship. Another person likes to drink beer with his friends at the bar, but isn't a good parent. One person has wonderful friends, but no time to visit mom in the nearby nursing home. One fan never misses a game of their favorite team, but at what cost? At what cost? Priorities are different for all of us. Priorities are what we put first in our lives. But what is trivial is what we think to be less important. The pursuit of what is trivial actually has a long history. We can travel to Rome today and visit the Fountain of Trevi. This fountain derives its name from the Latin word trivium, which means junction of three roads. Years ago, Ambitious people would set up shops to sell goods to travelers near this fountain of Trevi. Because of the location of the three roads, the things being sold, often which had little value, were called trivia. Trivia, of course, are insignificant or inessential things. Leaders of a company might say some of the trivia we discuss deprive our meetings of any real value. The Latin word trivia means that which comes from the street. If something is trivial, it really is of little importance or significance. One of the Bible readings for October 8th is from Philippians chapter 3. It's a very famous reading. Here, Paul reviews some of his supposed credentials, which no longer have any bearing in comparison to the right relationship Paul has been given through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the love of God and the power of Christ's resurrection that empowers Paul now as he presses on toward the ultimate goal, eternal life with God. Listen now to what Paul says 
in Philippians 3, 7 through 9. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him. Paul then talks about the priceless gain of knowing Christ in verses 10 through 14. He says things like, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I want to become like Christ. I have not obtained the goal yet, Paul says, but I press on to make it my own because Jesus has made me his own. Paul says, Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. When you read this lesson from Philippians chapter 3, at first it seems like Paul is boasting about his life and faith and achievements, but if you look closer, actually he's doing the opposite. He is saying that all human achievements, no matter how impressive, cannot earn a person's salvation and eternal life with God. Paul did not depend on his deeds to please God. Paul knew even the most impressive credentials fall short of God's holy standards. So I'm wondering what about you and me? Are we depending on Christian parents, church affiliation or attendance, or just being a good person to make ourselves right with God? Credentials, accomplishments, or reputation cannot earn us salvation. This comes only through God's grace and our faith in his, this grace. One day a little boy asked his mother a question, Mom, are bugs good to eat? The boy asked. Let's not talk about such things at the dinner table, son, his mother replied. But then after dinner, the mother inquired, Okay, now, honey, what did you want to ask me? Oh, nothing, the boy said. There was a bug in your soup, uh, but now it's gone. Most of us are very busy in life doing this and that. But are we so busy that we sometimes don't stop to smell the roses? Are we too busy to get the bugs out of the soup and take care of other small matters? How do we know for sure that our priorities are healthy ones and priorities that reflect our Christian faith in God? Paul's words in Philippians chapter 3 are challenging ones for you and me when they say, Whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Here Paul is thinking about his life. We all do this from time to time. After Paul considered everything about his life, all he had accomplished in life, it is interesting that he said it was all worthless when compared with the greatness of knowing Christ. This is an important teaching for all of us today as we reflect on our own values and priorities. A person's relationship with Christ and Christ's church is more important than we realize. Paul says it's more important than anything. Culture doesn't say this, but the Bible teaches it. Our relationships with God is more important than our health, our money, our time, our family, and our pleasure. To know Christ should be our ultimate goal. But is it? Today, God's Word invites you and me to consider our core values. Do we place anything above? Do we place anything above our relationship with Christ? If our priorities are misplaced, how do we begin to reorder them? 
Is it possible to adjust our busy schedules so we can come to Sunday worship or maybe worship at another time? Can we set aside a few minutes each day for prayer and maybe even a few verses of Scripture? Is it possible to quit trying to please others so much and start pleasing the God who gave us life now and eternal life later? Should we change some of our plans, our pleasures, and our habits? Whatever we give up, the Bible says, knowing and serving Jesus Christ is worth the sacrifice. But here is the good news, my friend. When we become one with Christ by opening our hearts to his love and trusting him, we experience the same power that raised him from the dead. That's what we find here in the text. Think about that for a few minutes. That same mighty power will help us live joyful, productive, moral, and faithful lives. People will look at us and wonder we, why we are so productive and happy every day. But before we can walk in this newness of life, we must die to sin. Just as the resurrection gives us Christ's power to live for him, his crucifixion marks the death of our own sinful self and our own selfish nature. Most of us have some regrets about the past. We have made some mistakes. Perhaps we have listened to the wrong people. We have developed some bad habits and addictions. Perhaps we have not always worked as hard as we could or treated people with love and kindness and honesty. Paul himself had reason to forget the past. Remember, Paul had held the coats of those who stoned Stephen, the first Christian martyr. You can read this in Acts 7, 57-58. Paul was called Saul. In those days, it was before he was converted on the road to Damascus. Yes, we all live in the tension of what we have been versus what we want to be. Because God loves us and our hopes are in Christ, we can then let go of past guilt and look forward to what God will help us become. Like Paul, we too can forget what lies behind and instead focus more on what lies ahead. We press on to be the loving and amazing person and church God calls us to be. This is the good news today. What lies behind us might be laziness, but what lies ahead is productivity. What lies behind might be excuses, but what lies ahead is concrete goals. What lies behind is not living up to one's potential, but what lies ahead is pressing on toward our God-given destiny and call. What lies behind might be suffering, but what lies ahead is glory. What lies behind is over, but what lies ahead is just beginning to happen. And we are part of this, we are part of God's work and God's mission. What lies behind might be immorality, but what lies ahead is faithfulness. What lies behind won't change anyone's life, but what lies ahead has unlimited potential. What lies behind is trivial, but what lies ahead is priceless. God loves you, my friend. He really does. God sent me here to love and serve you, and our future looks bright and joyful together. Please don't dwell too much on the past. Don't focus too much on how others mistreated you or how you may have failed here and there. We all fail from time to time. Those things don't matter anymore. Instead, be like Paul. Live for Christ. Live in the joy of Christ. Grow in your faith. Discover the joy of Christ and the joy of being a part of his church and a part of his worldwide mission. Christ forgives us for all our sins so we can move forward to a new life of faith and obedience. What a joy and privilege 
to be alive right now in 2023. Okay? I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, all right, Ted Dog or whatever your name is, you're so positive, but you don't know how hard my life is right now. You talk about all this glorious power and hope, but I don't see it happening in my life or my family before I die. It's a good question and a valid point to hear someone talk so positively and read this positive text from Philippians. And this is how I would respond to this very legitimate point. I believe in my heart if you turn your life over to Jesus for whatever time you have left on this earth, it's a good thing. You've been in charge of your life so far, driving the car of life, so to speak, and your driving has not always worked. Now let Jesus Christ have the steering wheel. Let Jesus Christ be in charge. Give Jesus the steering wheel. Give Jesus your worries. Quit trying to please others and instead please the real master of the universe, the master who created you and gave you life. This master is full of grace and forgiveness and new possibilities. Say to Jesus the same words Paul says, I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know the power of your resurrection. I want to resurrect my life, my family, my career, and my church. Just pray this to God sometime when you're alone and see what happens in a week or two. Remember, my precious friend, God never ends anything on a negative. God always ends things on a positive. Death is negative. Eternal life is positive. Unbelief is negative. But faith is positive. Despair, very negative. But hope is positive. Lower attendance at a church is negative. But growing attendance is very exciting and positive. God doesn't want your life to end in a negative God always ends things on a positive. When Jesus was crucified on Friday, nobody, and I mean nobody, could imagine Sunday and a glorious resurrection. The surpassing value of knowing Christ. Yes, the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ. This is the good news today. Amen. Now we continue with our next song, my favorite songs, it's called Surrender. Given you my heart, all that is within, lay it all down for the sake of you, my King. Given you my dreams, lay them down my rights, given up my pride for the promise of new life. And I Surrender all to you, all to you, and I surrender all to you, all to you. Singing you this song. sake of knowing you, the glory of your name, to know the lasting joy, even sharing in your pain, and I surrender all to you, all to you.
surrender all to you, all to you. And I surrender all to you, all to you. And I surrender all to you, all to you. Let's turn to God in prayer, shall we? Today the response after each petition ends with merciful God, your response is receive our prayer. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the Christian church everywhere. We pray for all creation, the needs of our sisters and brothers. We put our trust in you, Lord, as we pray for all of our church leaders Give our church leaders the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Help them to be patient in tough situations. Help them to lead the church to growth and new life. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in your truth as we pray for the whole world and all creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make good decisions that impact the environment. Help us teach people not to pollute and help us to become advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, air, and animals. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in justice and truth as we pray for all our government and military leaders. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking out for the needs of all persons. We pray for world peace. We pray for peace everywhere. We pray also for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Trust in your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way. We especially pray for any friends, neighbors, or loved ones who need your help and healing at this time. We may name them now. Give these precious people for whom we pray today encouragement, healing, and comfort by your presence Merciful God, receive our prayer. Teach us your paths, Lord, as we pray for all persons listening to this broadcast of Ted Russ Ministries. Be at work in each of us wherever we live and serve and unite us in your grace as we witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for all our precious loved ones who died. Secure in the knowledge of salvation, we may name some of these precious loved ones now. Keep us fearless in our faith as they were, and keep us certain of your resurrection and your promise to us of eternal life when you call us home. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us then according to your steadfast love as we offer these prayers, trusting in your compassion and hope, which is made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing song is Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. Please join me. The words are on the screen. Oh,
Love you very much, friends, and appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. I want to let you know that recently I was asked by Bishop Tim Smith, North Carolina Synod, to be an interim pastor at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Claremont, North Carolina. I started there last Sunday. And so if you're ever in the western part of the state of North Carolina near Hickory, please join us for worship at 10 o'clock. You can also tune in to their online service where I'll be preaching as well. I hope this week is a very special week for you and that God helps you begin to reach all your dreams. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.